Hi everyone, uh, my name is Matt and I am the Media Studies teacher here at Beat Six Farm. Um, uh, I need to say before we start, if anyone has any questions at any point throughout this presentation, um, if you want to ask them in the Q&A uh, window, then please do and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you might have. I'll try and preempt them as I go through, but if I miss anything, just, just type it out and uh, yeah, I'll answer them at the end. Um, so like I said, my name is Matt and I am the, the Media Studies teacher. I've been teaching here for seven years um, and throughout that seven years, Media Studies has been a really popular and really successful course. Um, no one's ever failed the Media Studies A level, which is something I'm particularly pleased about. And last year actually was our most successful results yet. Uh, we had 100% A to C pass rate on the A level, which means that everyone who studied it ended up getting anywhere between an A star and a C grade. So that was that was good. That was that was a good year for us. Um, I guess the part that you'd be interested in is what the course is actually about. Um, some of you might have studied it at GCSE. Um, and if you have, it's probably not too dissimilar. It's probably the next step on. But if you haven't studied it before, then that's not an issue. Media Studies is broken into two parts. So there's a theoretical side to the course and there's a practical side to the course. Um, as you can see, I've got some of the equipment kind of dotted around behind me that I'm trying desperately not to trip over, um, which is um, to do with the practical side of the course. What I'll do first is go through the theoretical side. So the theoretical side of Media Studies is broken into four key concepts. Our first key concept is called media language, and this generally is where we look at media products. So on our course, we look at everything from um, extracts from video games to full films to TV shows to newspapers to radio shows, everything you can imagine, basically. And we look at how the people who've made these, these products um, have actually gone about trying to embed messages within it. So I guess one way of putting it is like kind of looking for, for hidden messages within our media and, and how these things can be used to uh, make audiences feel certain ways. So you've probably noticed when you've been watching films or TV shows um, that certain scenes will make you feel um, in a, uh, feel more emotional than other scenes. And we look at why that is. And, and generally it comes down to a few different things that happen. We look at camera angles and how camera angles can make us feel certain ways about people. So why do close ups make us feel really uncomfortable? Uh, why do low angles make people look really monstrous? Um, we, we look at the sound as well. We listen to the sound and, and we look at how different frequencies can make audiences feel different ways. And we look at the overall story as well. So how stories are structured. Throughout the course, we look at several theorists who talk about how stories are structured. Um, and we examine whether there are more than whether there is more than one way to tell a story. So when, when you write scripts, can you tell stories in more than one way or do you have to follow a certain formula for a story to work? And we also look at like some pretty wild claims. Uh, for example, uh, one, one theorist that we look at says there's no more than actually eight stories that you could ever tell in the world. And this is a really interesting part of the course. The next step on from that is representation. So we look at how all that media language that we talked about, how you can make people feel uncomfortable, how you can make people feel really passionate about certain things. We look at how that is applied to people when they are put in the media. One of the most interesting parts of the course is where we get to look at the representation of Donald Trump throughout um, the newspaper media. And we look at how in some aspects of, of the newspaper industry, they turn him into an absolute godlike hero. And then we look at how actually on the other side of the media, they make him look um, less than that, let's say. They kind of make him look like a villain. And, and we look at kind of where he's come from and, and which is the more accurate kind of representation. Media Studies is good because it's very relevant. So uh, one of the modules on our course is looking at music video and we actually study like the Black Lives Matter movement. We've been doing that for a long time in Media Studies. Uh, so we look at the Black Lives Matter movement and how that um, is reflected in our media, how certain parts of the media again think that Black Lives Matter is a really positive thing and how other parts of the media think it to be quite a negative thing. We look at why that is. The next step on our course is audience. And this is kind of branching into the psychology element of, of media studies. We borrow from psychology a lot here. And we look at how people can be manipulated into feeling certain things. Now, one of the key arguments that we kind of use for kicking off our whole audience key concept is whether or not video games cause violence. This has been a media argument for a long time um, where, where some people think it does and some people think it doesn't. And we look at some of the theorists behind this. So there is a, a core group of theorists who believe that absolutely video games and, and exposure to violent media 
breeds violence in, in audiences and they put their arguments forward. On the flip side of this, we've got more kind of rational arguments about this. Some, uh, some theorists will say like prolonged exposure to violent media can in some cases create violence uh, in audiences. And then on the other hand, we've got theorists who say actually uh, there's, there's, no, there's no relationship between these things at all. And on the media studies course, you get to spend a long time kind of arguing these cases with your classmates and discussing these things between yourselves. The final part, the final key concept that we get to look at in media studies um, is industry. And this takes everything that we've talked about before, the media language, the representation and the audience uh, stuff that we've just discussed there. And we look at who owns the media and why they would want you to feel certain ways about certain things. The exam board have just changed one of their key texts this year, so they've changed one of our newspaper texts. Uh, and they've got a front cover um, of, a, of a newspaper for us to examine all about Brexit. Um, now, there's certain people in the media who would benefit massively from Brexit. Um, and we look at who that is and why they maybe use their newspapers to push Brexit as a good thing for the country. Then we get to kind of examine it for ourselves and decide whether or not we think it is a good thing or whether it's not necessarily a good thing. We look at control in, um, in the media industry and we get to talk about whether or not um, big companies owning a lot of our media is a good thing for creativity or a bad thing for creativity. One of the key texts we have to look at this year is Black Panther, the Marvel film Black Panther. And we get to examine it and, and look at whether or not it's like an original um, Marvel film, like a lot of kind of the, the people who run the Oscars were saying, and, and like Marvel themselves have said. Um, or we get to, and we get to examine it and kind of look at it from the perspective that actually it's not that dissimilar from anything else that's kind of come about in the past. Like I've said before, the Media Studies course kind of works around um, a, a wide range of key texts. So we get to study everything from, from uh, video games. So we'll look at Assassin's Creed and the Assassin's Creed franchise throughout that. In the first year, we get to look at Black Panther. Uh, we also get to examine some historical media texts as well. And we, we look at kind of like the, um, the advertising industry for the 1950s. Um, and we look at newspapers amongst a whole range of other things. So it's a really diverse course. Now, speaking of diversity as well, um, the other part of the course when we're not looking at exam stuff is based around coursework. And this is the part that people usually kind of expect media studies to be about. And it is for a good chunk of the year. Um, our media students have to do the whole production process from start to finish. So you will be uh, doing everything from uh, writing screenplays and looking at how to actually write stories. Um, to going out and filming them using a, a whole range of our cameras that we've got on display here and our lighting systems that we've got on display um, to bring it back to this media room and actually sitting in the editing suites and, and editing your footage and your, um, your photographs as well. As well, in the first year, we get to do a lot of photography. We look at journalism in the first year. So um, if anyone's interested in doing photography, then you do a good chunk of that in media studies. Um, in the first year, you have to plan out whole marketing campaigns for a movie of your creation. So you'll go out, take photographs, uh, bring them back, use Photoshop to edit them and, and make them into full magazines. Um, one of the key questions that usually gets asked about media studies is do I have to appear in my own films and my own photographs? No, you absolutely do not. Um, so if, if, if that is something that was kind of giving you a little bit of anxiety about the course, then, then uh, rest assured you don't ever have to appear in front of a camera. It's not a drama course, it's a media studies course. It's more about producing media than it is necessarily kind of acting in media. But if you want to act in your films, you absolutely can do. Um, in terms of like our career aspects, that's another question that comes up quite a lot. Generally, what you'll find is that if you're interested in uh, going to work in like journalism or anything like that, then media studies is a massive benefit to you. We, we write articles, we take photographs, we edit footage, and these are all key skills that journalists these days have to have. Um, people who've studied here have gone off to uh, work in, in the journalism industry, but we've also got people who've gone off uh, to film school and have then now began to work on feature films. Um, I was speaking to an ex-student the other day who uh, has just secured a job on the new Batman film, for example, he's gonna be working on Batman. Uh, which is which is really exciting. We've got people who've gone off to work in the advertising industry. So one of our ex-students has now set up a company uh, where he makes adverts for some pretty big 
pretty big companies. He's been working with test scores recently uh, and has been developing developing products for them. Um, and generally, it's it's just it's it's a good A level. It's it's a good robust A level uh, that will challenge you, but is enjoyable at the same time. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a general overview of what the media studies course is all about. Haven't had any questions. Perfect. Okay, well if anyone does want to ask any questions, please just send the college an email. I'll do my best to, to get back to you as soon as possible.